Hello guys, welcome to another Magic FX video. Um, so I did a poll last week asking what content you wanted to see from me next and the overwhelming response was to see my one minute entry criteria. So that's what you've got in this video. Um, I'm going to go through one of my entry models and show you exactly how I would use it in the live markets. Um, but it's important to remember that one minute entry models are not the be all and end all of trading. It's far, far, far more important to understand why and where you're trading from, um, from a higher time frame perspective, because uh, you'll see this entry model all over the place. Um, and it's there's no point just trading it from no man's land. You're going to get into a lot of trouble if you don't understand uh, exactly where you are or where you want to go with price. So uh, bear that in mind. Um, and I hope you enjoy the video. And don't forget to give me a like or a subscribe or both. Um, and leave a comment below as to what other content you want to see from me. So cheers, guys. Right then, guys, just thought I'd start off by going through uh, the concept of flips. I'm sure a lot of you already know what this is, but I've had a few people asking for my take on it. I can basically tell you that my take is exactly the same as anyone else's on this concept. Um, but anyway, so what we're looking for in price all the time is who is in control. That's what we should be asking ourselves, supply or demand. And a uh, flip is an area we can see on the charts uh, that pinpoints the area where one overtakes the other as to who's in control. Um, so for example, price is coming down in a bearish market here, creates this high and this supply zone, break structure to the downside and then what we'd expect expect sorry is that price would come back into this supply zone and then break structure to the downside again but in this case price comes down it reacts to the supply um, but then breaks to the upside uh, meaning this supply has failed and we've also created a new demand here um, and that is the basic concept of a flip. We've flipped from supply being in control here to demand being in control because if supply was in control, we'd have had a break to the downside, but we've had a break to the upside because demand is in control. Hence, we flipped from supply to demand um, and exactly the same thing in a bullish to a bearish market demand to supply. Um, and you can use this concept on all time frames again, um, both for entries and for your points of interest. Uh, if you haven't, go check out my video on choosing the best uh, supply and demand zones. Um, but this is an extra thing. You can add to that as an extra confluence um, to these zones because it gives them a bit more of a high probability that they'll get a reaction. Um, but yeah, of course you can also, if this occurs on the one minute or whatever time frame you want to enter on, uh, if it occurs on that time frame within a higher time frame zone that you were looking to trade from anyway, yeah, it's, it's, it's an entry type you can use. Um, and now I'll go a little bit more in depth as to what I actually look for to take an entry with this. Right, okay, so actually going into an entry model that I use uh, to trade with, um, I guess I'll just call it a V-shaped flip. Um, and it uses the flip concept we've just talked about and something called a V-shaped recovery, um, which is something that I notice people start talking about on Instagram, people I follow on there. And I saw it on their markups and stuff. I thought, oh, that's interesting. Um, and I back tested it, forward tested it myself and found that yeah, actually that is quite solid. Um, so what I use it now as one of my main entries, um, obviously in these scenarios, I've always built a high time frame story um, and refined down to a zone here, either on the 15 minute or a refined four hour zone or whatever, um, that I would look for the one minute to tap into and then give me this model and then I would enter. Um, so breaking down what is going on here, uh, price obviously come down, it's 
stuttered a little bit here, uh, created a supply zone here, um, and then very aggressively tapped into our refined zone that we are looking at, and then aggressively recovered, and then combined that with the fact that it's reacted to this new supply zone that was created, and then broke structure to the upside, creating a demand. Uh, so there we've got our flip, and then price after price breaks, I would um, I would set an entry on this demand zone that we've just created, and wait for price to tap in and go. Now. You might be questioning um, why wouldn't you enter down here at the extreme? And basically, my answer to this is on these entries, I've always found, or most of the time for me, found that price does not want to come back to the extreme. Um, also, what you want to be looking for is a nice wick here. So ideally, price is just wicked into your zone that you're looking at and then had the flip and then broke up to the upside. Um, and I guess a way of thinking about it is that price, because it so aggressively came down and then immediately reacted back, um, it's taken a lot for price to do that. And then not only that, we've had the flip in this area. So it's gonna, price has done the work it needed to do. It's almost like it's like, it's taken a big breath in here and been like, and like it's, um, it's done its job here and it took a lot for it to do that. And it only wanted to stay in that area very briefly. So this newly created demand zone here, it's happy just to tap into that and then go knowing that price has done its job already down here. Um, to add more confluences to this, you can see this as a liquidity sweep. Um, if there's a, queer, a, <laughs> a clear sweep of liquidity down into this zone, or if, if say your, I've talked about this as well, if say your 15 minute low is here and this zone is just outside that low and price just wicks into it and then gives this that's high probability um and yeah same thing for a, a short uh price taps in aggressively so it's like struggling up here and then it's like gives that big push and then immediately comes back down reacts off it and gives the flip you just want to get in right there um and these are some of the only times really where i'll be confident to go for more of a decisional um i don't know whether my way of thinking about it is correct or not but it, i just know it works for me um you know i know nothing about what price is actually doing or why it's why it's doing it um it's just these things are what I have found work um, and I've just found with these aggressive v-shaped recoveries price doesn't tend to go to this extreme um, so yeah that's the basic entry and now I'll go over to the charts and go through price so you can see exactly what I mean rather than just these mental di diagrams that I've uh, made Okay, so actually getting into some price action now, um, starting from the weekly down to the 15 minute as always to build the higher time frame picture. Um, and basically I'm gonna go down and show you where you can use these entry models. Um, this is going back to the 23rd of November, uh, just cause it gives some great examples. And so starting on the weekly, uh, I've been through this price action a few times in the recaps, but I'll just briefly say again, we've uh, entered this, what is actually a monthly zone. Um, we've turned bearish on the weekly, um, created a new high here, and this is our current swing high. And we haven't actually cemented a swing low yet on the weekly. Um, so our range is open, but we are in this weekly demand zone. 
Now, my trading view is being very laggy and slow at the moment, and it's been that way since I updated it to the latest desktop version. And what I have to keep doing is going to the watch list, opening and closing, and then it goes back to normal. Uh, if anyone knows how to fix this, please let me know in the comments, because uh, it's bloody annoying. But uh, yeah, I guess I'm just gonna have to wait for an update. Anyway, moving on. Um, so the weekly, we're looking at this area for price to potentially turn around and pull back to this, perhaps this supply or this supply here, anywhere in the premium of this range. But of course it could just keep tearing down at this stage. So weekly doesn't tell us a heck of a lot just to be wary that we could take longs in this area. Um, so yeah, looking at the daily, see if it gives us anything else uh, we can refine the weekly first of all down to this candle here which is where price currently is residing um, and the daily we can see we're in a much smaller range than we are on the weekly uh, so the daily would have to turn bullish in order for the weekly supply to be met um, so we could potentially be looking at a pullback from this demand zone into this area here um, but again that's just something to be wary of as to where price could go that's why we look at the daily the weekly just to uh, back up our whatever we're doing on the lower time frames um, is really the idea of building a story it's, it's that backup to give yourself that confidence that what you're doing is right um, so yeah that's the daily basically um, but let's go to the four hour to give us something a bit more interesting um, so we can hit this on as a daily zone and we can also refine it down to I guess three separate areas that happen to be in the premium of the four hour range uh, which would first of all be the extreme which is this little candle up here then we've got this couple of wicks here um, and then this much bigger sort of candle right here um, now these are all the supplies that are in the premium and I'm going to contradict myself here of what I've said previously uh, because usually they're the only supplies that I would look at but because this is the four hour and the four hour happens to hold a lot of weight even a supply zone on the four hour that is in the discount uh, could potentially get some sort of reaction on the 15 minute because even if it gives just a small reaction on the four hour uh, a one minute entry on that reaction uh, could actually be a fine intraday trade on the one minute um, so you know you can bear in mind these sorts of discount supplies or you know premium demands on the four hour uh, especially if it is the demand which broke structure because you know price might just keep going like this for a while. It can just start going small, little breaks like that, just trickling down before it then decides to turn properly bullish. Um, so, you know, it's totally valid to take that, especially, you know, on the four hour. On the 15 minute, uh, you might want to think again, um, but the four hour, it's good. That's what I always say, you know, the higher time frames. Um, even if it's a shitty area, it's just a small reaction on the higher time frames. Could be something, you know, pretty big on the lower ones. Anyway, so that's why you can potentially look at this big old uh, doji wiki candle as a supply zone. Okay, so that's what we're looking at on the four hour. So if we go down now to the 15 minute we can see we let's first of all just get rid of anything that isn't currently being used um, so on 15 minute if I remove this we can see the price has come down here uh, I'm missing no okay so it's come down we've uh, broken this high and therefore turned bullish on the 15 minute 
So immediately, first of all, what you want to do is mark out the 15 minute range and look for where you would take pro trend uh, long. So you've got this demand zone. Let's just move that away so we can see better. We've got this demand zone. Uh, we've got this demand, it gets a little bit messy down here, but still valid. What we can actually do is refine these down to the wicks. Um, so that's now well into the discount area. Uh, refine that one down to its wick. Um, and then, you know, I guess you could just look at this, whatever's unmitigated in that wick as well. Um, so, yeah, you've got. You got some areas there to look for longs, but at the same time, remember we are reacting to a four-hour uh, supply up here, uh, which we could also refine down to this very nice-looking fifty-minute supply zone right there. Now, as I've said in previous videos, of course we are bullish on the fifteen-minute now. So in order to actually take a counter trend short on the 15 minute, I'd want to see a 15 minute change of character, which if you look here, we do get because this high and then low of this inside bar and then that high being broken, um, that counts as my change of character right there. That's enough for me for a change of character. Obviously it's not a break of uh, swing structure but that for me is a 15 minute change of character to bearish um, so that is enough for me as it's tapped into this four hour supply refined to a lovely looking uh, 15 minute supply um, and we've changed character right here on 15 minutes so don't underestimate 15 minute changes of character from four hour zones um, like I say I've been over it before um, but yeah, if you're looking at counter trend, counter trend trades, um, yeah, you can't go far wrong with uh, that kind of that kind of price action. Um, yeah, it it is powerful stuff. Um, so anyway, what am I looking at now? So in order to take shorts, I'd want price to come back into this 15 minute supply we've created which could probably refine down to something a bit smaller. That's the 10 minute, so probably that wick on the 10 minute, five minute, yeah. So we take that five minute, uh, nice bullish candle there that gets engulfed. Um, and yeah, we'll see how we go with that. If price gets back into this, I'd be happy to take shorts from here if we get our entry model that we've already talked about. Okay, and we can take it all the way down to these demands. Um, so now I will go to the one minute and see if price makes it up to our area. Play it forward. Right, so this is just about tapped our uh, refined zone here. Um, so we can see if we get anything. Yeah, this just about counts as a tap for me. Um, yeah, on it counts as a, as a, as a tap. That's fine. Um, so looking at this currently, I'm seeing very much our V shape right here. Um, here. So already I'm thinking right. Okay, that looks pretty nice. Uh, for a, for a V-shape, it's an aggressive move up into our zone and an aggressive reaction. So all I would want to see now is for price to react some way to this most recent demand, uh, react off it, and then break it here. So then I would happily enter off of something created here. Um, so let's see what happens with this price has tapped into this demand. Let's see if we tap deeper into this supply zone or we actually get our entry model here. 
Yeah. Okay. So this is absolutely picture perfect version of a V shaped flip um, for me. Uh, so where I would enter would be off this candle. This is the demand to supply candle. Um, I would just take probably the whole thing. I should get quite a small stop on that anyway. 1.5. Um, yeah, so the only thing that would make this particular example any better would be a nice wick at the top. Um, if you look at it on the two minute. Yeah, I mean, that is, you know, it's out of this world, basically. That is, that's exactly what you want to see uh, for this trade. Um, so, yeah, going back to the one minute, uh, we'll see if we get entered in here and if we can get a trade going. Um, but that is the setup, and it's a story built, it's the entry model, and we're good to go. It's being very slow. Do I need to do the uh, sped it up a little bit? Ridiculous. Now, um, you might be wondering uh, when would I cancel this trade? Um, and I would cancel as soon as. See this low, this is now an official low because this was closed above it. Um, so as soon as this low gets closed below, then this trades off for me. Um, it's as strict as that basically. And how, how could I possibly look to re-enter if that did happen? Well, I'd let price do its thing. Uh, if it continues down with momentum, I would look to get in continuations. Um, and those I've talked about in other videos, uh, basically just want to look for momentum um, and the intention to be there. Um, but failing that, if it's a bit choppy uh, or you get taken out of a potential continuation, I would wait for price to come back up somewhere in this level or perhaps for, to a further tap into the um, this original zone and just wait for our entry model again uh, and if it doesn't happen it doesn't happen so yeah that's basically it I hope that made sense um, so yeah we'll see if we get tagged in this one oof yeah so that's pretty pretty close there um, might have taken us out but let's just say it depends on the spreads on your account really on your broker um, but yeah let's just say we're in for now um, and that's Nice, that's what we want to see. Price to continue down. And yeah, okay, so what we've got here, we've got a new low formed here, and price has uh, created a high and broken down again. So we can actually lock in some profit above there. I like to leave a little bit of space uh, for price just in case it sweeps and continues down. Um, but yeah, as in all my other videos, the way I'll manage it is just to uh, trail the stop below the one minute swings, basically. Um, so now we've got another one here. But it doesn't look like we can trail anymore because you know, that's basically the same height. Um, anyway, so let's see if we can lock in anything else. Uh, we haven't actually had any new highs or any lows cemented yet? Uh, so let's see, up until this point. Okay, so now we're looking for this low to break in order to lock in some more profit. Um, at this point, you'd probably be like a little bit fuming. But you could also, I'm not really going into scale ins in this video, I'm just looking at the original initial entry model. But as in other videos, again, uh, continuations, you know, just take the extreme take this wick I mean I would probably go for this one also and it's up to you you can choose to cover the high the overall high or not uh, that would be a 2.3 pip stop so maybe I would take the middle and cover the high with a 1.9 or 1.8 even um, so that's what I would do if I was looking at scalings. Uh, 
and you might eventually yeah but I'm not I'm not focused on that in this video but it's just showing you how I would get into continuations because this also goes to show how this way of mapping structure is very accurate because you can see this is all just one leg we didn't get a candle that closed above the one to its left until here so our high is here our low is here none of this counts as an actual high um, but if you were confused before about how you map structure um, go check out my video on it this will make a lot more sense um, but yeah you can see price just plays around in the range we've established before shooting off down it doesn't break the range um, so yeah that is just more proof of that way of mapping structure uh, being accurate so again it's not letting us lock in a heck of a lot more we can go a little bit above this high now 1.93 R uh, it's not amazing but we're running pretty nicely at 9.3 9.4 so you know if you wanted to just close at 10 hour or whatever no one's gonna bite your ass off or anything um yeah so we're just waiting for price to give us another cemented low and for price to break that low um so yeah let's see what we can do and okay so we can now actually lock in a decent bit of profit so locked in AR here just above there um, and yeah and carrying on now we've reached uh, one of our demand zones here so we can look to um, hedge long which is an ideal situation to be in if we get our entry model here um, we can place a long entry and now either way price goes uh, we're laughing so let's have a little look um, right so here you can see we've got the start of a fairly decent looking uh, V so we can see if we get our flip entry and um, so we can get involved in a long okay so for me in order to become you know really truly valid we want to be breaking this high ideally um, so if we get a reaction because if you see here yes we've broken this it's not a full breaker structure it's a change of character and that's fine you can enter on those um, but for me I'd need a really solid reaction and a nice flip um, in order to enter that and this wick alone uh, is a reaction that's a demand or supply to demand but I, I like to see a bit more of a one minute reaction for me rather than just a wick um, that's my preference so for me I'm not entering there um, but you know test it yourself it's up to you so for me we're still playing in this this overall range so we're still bearish overall um, so yeah like I said I wouldn't have got in there um, now here this looks a bit nicer for me so we've reacted to this extreme supply oh god um, and these two candles are enough of a reaction for me uh, and so if we now go on to break come down here and break um, I might be interested in going long there so we'll see what happens um, but as you can see yeah we do have this nice V shape it's not perfect but yeah it's I'd be happy to take a long from that uh, but it doesn't look like yeah so it's just carried on uh, moving down for us there so this was our low and it just got broken there now again we can't actually lock in any more profit here um, but we will carry on monitoring and trailing price as we go okay again you know the uh, the scaling opportunities 
a bit massive in this leg. Uh, so if, if we were playing continuations, you could make a heck of a lot of R. Okay, so we've broken down again. <laughs> again, it's not given us uh, a heck of a lot to lock in. Um, so we're still we're about 9R now locked in, um, which is great, you know, but hopefully we can get a little bit more. We're reaching the end, the extreme area of this uh, demand zone. It doesn't look like it's gonna hold at this minute. And no, it's it's been broken now. Uh, but the good news is we can lock in a little bit. Oh no, we can't. We can't lock in anything yet. Uh, now we can. Okay, so now we can lock in above this high here. So we're at 12.6 R on that one. Um, yeah, same management as in all my videos. Um, so this is our new low. We're looking for this to get closed below. And we can get rid of that demand zone because that did nothing for us. And we have just tapped into this one. So let's go remind ourselves where we are on the 15 minute. So if we look at this zone, we can actually see that it's been kind of mitigated up to that point. So if you look at the unmitigated portion of the wick, that's another way of refining your zones if you want to, um, just down to the unmitigated portion of a wick. And you know, there's quite a lot of wick left over here. So, and we have just tapped into that. So we'll see, we'll see if anything comes of this. Um, obviously the 15 minutes, minute was showing us a bit of the future there. Anyway, uh, I didn't think you could shift and do that. Hmm. Anyway, so here we go. Right, so that's a nice tap into the zone. Uh, we're still in this zone just about. Now, will that, first of all, yes, we're locking in a bit more, up to there now. So this trades at 14R, we're pretty happy with that. Um, but I've noticed this wick here in this demand zone. So if we go on to break this high, I'll be happy to long, so we'll see. We're in a good area. Uh, what have we done here? It's a pretty decent move up. If we go on the two minute, looks a lot nicer. So that's another thing you can do. If the one minute's a bit messy, you can look at the two minute, three minute, whatever. Um, but what you can see here is that we did initially have a little reaction to uh, this supply, but you know, not a heck of a lot. But anyway, what we're waiting for is an actual break of this high here. So let's see, what are we reacting to now? That's a bit more of a reaction. That's what I like to see. This is more of a relevant supply. So as you can see here, if you zoom out a little bit, you've got a nice V shape forming. So if we now get this reaction and then move up, I'll be happy to play this demand um, as our uh, long. So let's see what we get. Okay, so we are, right, we've now broken this bit of structure. Um, now you can see here that we have had a change of character um, version of the flip. So we didn't actually break full structure, but we had a reaction to, oh, we actually more had a reaction to this. Yeah, there was no, nothing like completely clean. Uh, we had a reaction, then a f it's more of a failed reaction without an actual break of structure. Um, but if you were looking to take those, you could have got in uh, on that. Um, but personally, I don't really take those. So anyway, what we're looking for now is price to come back here and give us an entry. 
from this. I would probably use one of these bad boys so we can get a smaller stop and just cover any dangerous looking price over here. So 1.8 um, and yeah that is where I would look to get in. So let's see what happens. Okay so price gets away from us here. Um, as you can see this was bang on bang on um, New York Open so the momentum has kicked in massively but this is still one leg so technically uh, I'm not removing the order until uh, we create a new uh, low and new high uh, so now we do actually have our high here so if this gets broken I'll take the order off But as you can see, let's just look at it. This is, again, a lovely example of an entry. And actually looking back on it, considering the timing of this, I may have actually been tempted to take this as a just a change of character or a failed reaction, just because this would be bang on New York Open. Um, but yeah, you know, that's just that's session timings, um, whatever. But anyway, let's continue on. So obviously, we're still giving it open because this is all just one leg for me. So if it comes back here, there's no different from it coming back from here. Um, the distance doesn't matter. You just wait in a while, but it's coming down very correctively. Um, so, oh, good. So let's just move that over and see what happens. Okay, so we do get tagged in and get a really nice reaction here. Now, if you were being super cautious, uh, you might, of course, wait for the reaction first. So what you'd look for is perhaps a break of this high before actually getting in, uh, which you would get here. And what you kind of got is another version of the V. So um, who knows if this works, but you could just take something off here if you're being a cautious Kevin. Uh, but yeah, for me it was still valid just to take as it was but you know that would have worked for you as well it looks like um, so anyway that's just another example of what you could do but I would like just to take it it's in my plan to take this um, even though it's gone a long way that is just one leg for me so I will uh, that's my high so I'm not locking any price yet um, wanting that to break um, so actually that uh, this entry would have been taken out <laughs> so that would be no good this isn't the uh, nicest price action heart would be a little bit in your stomach um, I do remember it being a dodgy one I, did, I actually took this one live these trades we'll see good day okay so we've immediately we've broken the structure here closed above and created a new low and then broken that high so that's the ideal scenario um, being able to lock in some profit straight away there uh, so there we go trading view has gone slow again so cheers to them uh, so what's that we've got eight about eight are locked in there. Um, see if we can get any more. Um, haven't really created a new low until this point in a way. Mm, 
Okay, so we then break. structure here okay so we can now our lowest point was here so we can now lock in we've locked in 9.7 get any more in there okay so we can lock in a little bit more profit uh, just below this low, yeah, 10.8, it's just the same old management until yeah, price eventually takes you out. Um, at peak, we're running at 16R. Um, yeah, we took we took about 10, 10 to 11 R on that one. So just two trades there, um, without all the scalings you could get. That's yeah, you know, that's a good twenty five R. Um, sort of just showing the power of getting in these V shaped uh, flip entries, um, and they don't. You know, you might not get one every single day of the week. Um, but when they do happen in the right areas, they're very powerful, so look out for them. Um, and yeah, that's that's one of my entry models pretty much covered. I hope that made sense to everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you're still enjoying the content. Uh, like and subscribe, please, if you would, uh, and share, share the videos if you find them helpful. Leave me a comment down below if there's a certain kind of video you would like me to make. Um, and look forward to the Magic FX Academy that's gonna be released in January. So um, yeah, I've got a lot of people asking about any potential community or course, and yeah, that is coming in January. So, you know, anyone that wants New Year, New Them, I'm, uh, I'm your man. Um, so yeah, I will catch you later.